Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here is the first video I'm making on this Nissan S14 200SX drift car. So as you can see, there's a few little slight bits of damage on the roof. We just knocked that into a low spot, put some body filler into it, sanded the entire roof down, took it in the boost for Prime, which you'll see in a minute. With that engine bay, there was a bit of grease and stuff all over it, so we just got a bit of gum wash thinners in a spray gun, sprayed it all over it, wiped it off, give it a bit, a bit of a quick scotch bright and took it in the booth. Um, also those uh, quarter panels, we did some fiberglassing work around there with some fiberglass resin and some matting. So you can see I've primed the roof up, I then cut that masking back out and um, I'm about to do the paintwork on the engine bay. He wanted a purpley sort of pinky color on the engine bay so we um, made sure I gave it a good etch prime first. I used some Valspar industrial etch here seems to stick quite well to that metal that's just a 1k etch ready for use pour it straight out of the can and straight on in you go so i did about three coats of base coat which you can see here it's pretty tricky to get into all these different angles so and the red especially doesn't really cover that well that's solvent based base coat that you see me using there um i just i matched every single color on this car from the 2K white to the red that you see here to the green and the blues that you'll see later on, even the ground coats and every single stage. I'll elaborate on that a little bit more as we continue on with the job. So that's just um, two coats of Duke's own plus 2K clear, just the MS clear, cheap stuff. And yeah, just bombed a couple of coats over it. Um, I use the Devilbus SGK 600 BV, which is also known as the FLG5, I believe, in the UK. And I think any American viewers who are interested in that SGK or FLG5, you'll have to get it from the UK because I believe it's not actually a compliant gun in the US. However, they will send them out for eBay. Um, one of my favorite everyday use guns, I have mentioned it in some other videos, but I do highly recommend grabbing one um, if you are in the in the market for a new spray gun at a reasonable price that can good, deliver great quality results. So here we are doing the inside. I ended up getting a mate of mine to help me out, my business partner. Um, we just sprayed a good coat of the etch primer over all of the steel. We obviously gave the entire thing a really good wipe down with uh, wax and grease remover and then both of us just jumped in there and we put some white on so as far as white goes it was just some 2k dupont centauri i mixed a bit of that with a bit of nace on and there was some other stuff that we had sitting there i just threw it all together and just put some hardener with it and look uh it may not be recommended to mix this paint with that paint with that paint but you know what it it worked and it worked this time and it totally there's nothing wrong with it um, yeah, I mean, most people wouldn't recommend it, but you know what? This customer, he wasn't paying good money for it. Um, this was a budget paint job from the start. Um, we just said, mate, we'll charge you $1,000 for materials, even though we probably put about $2,000 worth of materials on there. Um, and we just agreed on an hourly rate. Me, my partner, and him all sat down together, and we said, yep, we'll do this hourly rate for you, and we'll just rip into it. We'll get it done as fast as we possibly can. He just wanted a mad, real loud paint job, something that just uh, really stood out. And um, we all agreed on a hourly rate, which he then turned around and cracked the shits and didn't even end up paying. But that's another story. I won't get too involved in that. So it turns out that I'm glad I did just use, I didn't order in any paint. All the paint that we had that we used on this was already around our workshop because we had um, just some leftovers from jobs. So I just threw them all together and it, it worked fine. There's nothing wrong with doing stuff like that. I mean maybe some of the paint reps will be turned around and say hey you're not allowed to mix this paint with that paint and this hardener in that kind of paint and but yeah it works fine it's all the same stuff there might be one or two key ingredients that do vary but hey results are what we care about at the end of the day and end results on this is something i was quite happy with look we got sort of a, there's going to be a lot of dust that lands in a paint job when you're talking something like the interiors like this you know um there's just some corners that you we spent like best part of 20 minutes just with the air gun and the vacuum cleaner and just blowing it out wiping it off but you're still just going to get little bits of dust coming out of all those corners once you start painting and it's just going to start sticking to that wet paint but um for what it is it's just a drift car uh he just told us as long as it looks good from 10 meters away that's all he really cares about and it looks pretty mean from 10 meters away and it looks even pretty quite nice from a few meters away you get up a little bit closer yeah you can start to see a few imperfections in it but hey 
I'm not uh, losing any sleep over it. Anyway, there the body's done. We pulled that out after a couple of hours in the booth and put it into the sun to help it dry off. And we left it overnight. And the next day we were able to bolt those over fenders on and paint the car. So now we're onto the panels here. Um, again, I just mixed a couple of different paints together. I mixed some Metalux with some DuPont. I found it was like a coarse metallic in the DuPont Centauri 600 range. And then I had some Metalux bright metallic. Mixed them two together for a ground coat. Um, why did I choose silver for a ground coat? A couple of reasons, because we had it and it didn't cost us anything extra. We didn't have to order it in. And also, it's going to be a nice bright colour to um, sort of three-layer the blues and the greens. So we've got the blue and the green that will be going on over the top of this silver. Um, had I have not put this silver down, <clears throat> it would have taken a hell of a lot of extra coats for the blues and greens. Because um, cause they're solvent-based, they really don't cover that well. Um, some of these colours that are just full of pearls. It also has the added effect of giving it a bit more brightness in the sun. So... Uh, being that it's not actually 100% covered with the, the colour, um, you're going to be seeing through that colour to the nice bright silver, so it's going to give it a good effect also out there in the sun. And the final stage, we decided to uh, put a extra coat over the top with a bit of pearl mixed with some intercoat, so some clear base coat. And then we even decided to get all crazy and put some DNA hologram uh, flakes in it, so it ended up looking quite nice out there in the sun. So that's it, after putting the silver down, all I needed to do was just two coats over that and I got pretty good coverage because it's a fairly fine, uh, it's got more fine silver in it than what it does the coarse metallic. Um, there was just a touch of coarse metallic in there and most of it was fine metallic. I found the coarser the silvers, the less you, less coverage you're going to get out of it um, because they need to put extra binder in there to uh, float those metallics. However, there's less binder in with the finer metallics and you'll get better coverage. So the green that I'm using here, this isn't actually mixed up 100% off a of formula. Um, I had a quick look at some of the greens. He wanted a really nice bright green. So I had a look at some of the popular greens. There's a really nice one on um, Holden's in Australia. Uh, so anyone who wants something that's close enough to that green, it, there is a color code you'll be able to type in and get something quite close to it. So that is 609R and the name of the colour is called Atomic by GMH or Holden Manufacturer. So it's General Motors Holden in Australia. Um, 609R again is that paint code. Um, so yeah, I just mixed up just by eye. I matched it through the Metalux paint system because we had it sitting there. There's, it's load, loaded full of the um, yellow gold pearl. Um, and then just mainly just got a few greens in it and that's about it. It's got very poor coverage by itself. So again, that's where that silver really did help out. All I did was two coats, so it also helped it really stand out and brighten up right up. So you're actually sort of seeing through that green to that silver and it ends up giving it a real nice uh, bright pop out there in the sun. Um, yeah, again, you could probably use a white. A lot of the three stage pearls are done with a white base coat, but we didn't have any white, we had some silver, so you know it saved us from ordering some more painting for the job. End results are quite nice too. So I'm using the Devilbus SGK 600BV again, otherwise known as the FLG5, same gun. This is a workhorse, anyone? Yeah, I really highly recommend getting onto this gun. Um, I can get just as good a results with this as any gun, just as good as the SATA 5000, just as good as the GDI Pro Light, whereas the gun is half the price, if not quarter of the price of the cider jet. Two hundred dollars I got one of these delivered to my door from eBay. As you can see I have sped up quite a few parts in this video to four times speed otherwise it just uh, ended up getting quite a little bit too long um, and look as much as anything it gets a little bit tiring for me doing the narration on these videos sometimes I tell you what they don't edit themselves and really does take a lot of time and effort out of my week just about every single Sunday I dedicate at least eight hours to making these videos and I do do my best to um, keep the content fresh stop repeating myself as much as possible however i do know i am aware that i do repeat myself every now and then but this video here is just going to be taking you guys through the base coat and the next video we're going to be just focusing on clear coat i've already sort of done half the editing on that one 
It was a pretty easy edit for me. Most of it was just totally unedited, start to finish, clear coat. Just two coats of clear and that's it. It goes for about 20 minutes. Um, and hey, let me know what you guys think. If you're happy for me to just whack a bit of tunes on in the background, or you know, would you, uh, if I run out of stuff to say, or would you rather me just uh, leave the sound of the spray booth in so you can hear the spray gun? You know, a bit of feedback's always welcome. There's only so much I can rattle on about spray guns and settings and uh, stuff like that before I am going to uh, repeat myself. But next up, I'm on to the blue. So you can see the green's done, I've then moved on to the blue parts. I also primed up that front bumper bar, but I did that first, because I didn't want any overspray to land on something that's already been freshly painted. So you've always got to be um, thoughtful of which way the uh, spray booth airflow goes. So from in my spray booth, it comes in up the front of the booth where the green stuff is, and then it blows down and goes through the filters at the very back of the booth just where that bumper bar is. So started off, did the bumper bar, then did the green, then did the blue. And then uh, when even when I'm doing my clear coat, I still like to work with the flow of the air. So um, you'll do the very thing that's up the front of the spray booth first, and then you're working your way down. So rather than any overspray landing on something that you've just finished painting, even though it's still wet, um, I still like to uh, have it up land where you're about to paint rather than where you have painted. So I'll give you guys a quick run through the settings I'm using on the SGK. Uh, it's sitting on about 20 PSI for base coat. Have that fan wound right open and then just come in one full turn. And also with the uh, fluid control, I've had that wound right out and again come in one full turn. i found that gives me some pretty nice finishes. Um, also the air pressure setting, that's going to vary um, depending on the kind of finish that you're looking for. I might jump it up a little bit if I'm doing clear coat. Um, also if it's really warm, you probably find that the pressure will read a little bit lower. However, you'll actually end up being still getting the same amount of flow out of the cap even though the pressure setting will change with the temperature. Um, so yeah, just sped it back up again um, and with these blue panels, I just gave them three coats. I did a spray out card with this blue and it, that was over no ground coat. So it was just over a black and white test card and it took about six or seven coats so you actually got full coverage. So it really showed me how transparent this is actually going to be. However, three coats gives it a visual coverage. Um, it's not patchy or anything like that. Um, as I said before, they, you, it's just going to be brightening it up a, a little bit when you do get it in the sun. So that's our third coat, just giving it a bit of a sort of medium wet coat just to even up any patchiness and just leaving that pressure just about the same. Some people like to drop it down a little bit on the last coat. I used to even sometimes jump it up a little bit on the last coat, but it's not really necessary as long as you get it on nice and even. And this gun does have a nice big spray fan, so I find uh, metallic's quite easy to uh, paint with this gun. Clear coat's easy to paint with it. You can even do thin primers, so if you to do something like a wet on wet, non-sanding primer, this gun will, um, with it quite fine however if you're doing a primer filler type stage you really probably would want to go to the uh, air guns uh, az3 or any any 1.8 to sort of 2.2 more gun will do a primer filler primer surfacer um, and i'm actually going to be using the az3 for this uh, intercoat here so i've actually turned this into a four layer so i'll put the silver down first put my blue and green down second um, and then I'm putting this intercoat, which has got the, a bit of sunbeam pearl in it, so it's just clear base coat. Um, it's then got a bit of sunbeam pearl in it, and then I put just three teaspoons of the hologram flakes from DNA. Um, it just gives it a pretty cool effect when it's out there in the sun. It doesn't really show up 100% on camera, however, at the very end, if you hang around, you'll be able to see that um, yeah, you can get, get the basic idea, but in person, it really does stand out a lot better. Um, to use any flakes like this, um, I do recommend spraying it through a 1.8, uh, 2.0 is probably too much. Um, if you to use a 2.0 mil, you're just going to be going through lots of material and probably just get it on a bit too thick. So you could probably go 1.6. You could go 1.4 if you want, but it just seems to um, possibly clog up that air cap and it doesn't come out quite as nice. Um, so I also sometimes give that gun a shake up because they do have a tendency to uh, settle those because their flakes are quite heavy. 
200 micron flake so they sort of want to settle down um, so yeah just give the gun a shake up every now and can now and then can help so as you see there so you might have noticed that these are gel coat fiberglass parts and I just painted straight over them I didn't even prime them um, simple reason if we had have gone to the extent to prime every single one of these parts the job was just gonna blow out and he really didn't want to spend the money and look to be honest it ended up coming up quite fine this one here this guard here you'll be able to see if you hang around for a couple of minutes there is a few uh, pinholes that were left in the top of it but hey for what he paid and for what he got he definitely got his money's worth and I'm not losing any sleep over a couple of little pinholes in there when it's driving past at 100 to 200 kilometers an hour drifting down the road no one's ever gonna see it these guys smash their cars up all the time as well so yeah um, if you we really wanted to get picky with it we could have just um re-cleared them and it would have actually filled up filled them up and look to be honest re-clearing is probably just as easy as what it would have been to prime anyway and then you've got a flow coat um, another thing you got to think about is uh, if you are using flakes like this you probably are definitely better off flow coating you really want to use a high solids clear the next stage stage will be going through clear coat in the next video but this video is just about finished up now and it ends up there with that intercoat. You can sort of see those hologram flakes. Um, they've got sort of a bit of a rainbow effect and hey, they do look pretty cool. Um, I must admit it does remind me a little bit like what my sister used to paint her nails in, but hey, I don't know why. For some reason, I really do like it. It's, I guess it's just something different. You don't get to deal with stuff like this every day. So recently a guy said to me, um, when I painted the boot lid of my VL Commodore uh, off the car and it's a metallic, and I didn't paint it at the same time as the rest of the car. He said, oh, would that make it so it's a different color? Um, if you know what you're doing and you're a good painter, uh, the answer should be no, and this is a perfect example. I painted those fenders off the car, um, and as you can see here, that was like a four-stage metallic, so we put the silver, blue, then the top coat over the top, and there's really no color difference whatsoever there so yeah if i can get a four stage um edge to edge then there's no reason you shouldn't be able to get a normal uh dual stage clear over base right from uh panel to panel if you know what you're doing all you got to do is just get the exact same amount of coats on there with the ex exact same thickness you just don't put it on you just remember what you did and that's all i did and i managed to get some quite good results you can see a few little lumpy high spots from those uh flakes but yeah a quick flow coat would have definitely sorted them out anyway stay tuned for the next video in the next video i'm going to be giving you guys some great tips on painting in the cold using high solids clear and the starter jet 5000b 1.3 rp digital thanks for watching this has been another gun man production goodbye